On February the 6th, our church commemorates the feast day of St. Fortios, Patriarch of Constantinople. The following are some details on his life and works. A brilliant scholar, soldier, statesman and theologian, Fortius was born in 820 AD, a period when Byzantine culture was writing the brightest chapter in the world history. With prodigious talents suited to that era, his life spanned seven decades, during which his glorification of God and man earned him the titles of Great Star of the Church, Father, Doctor, Confessor, Isapostolos, which means equal to the Apostles, and finally the ultimate in titles, that of Saint. In this cultural atmosphere, however, strewn in the path of all men in public life were the many pitfalls of church-state power manoeuvring, plots and counterplots, which Fortius managed to survive in an unswerving approach to immortality. The career of Fortius began with military service during the reign of Emperor Michael III, son of Theophilos, and extended through the rules of Basil I and then Leo VI. From captain of the guard, a post in which he first displayed excellence, he was elevated to imperial secretary, the highest political office in the realm. This was an office whose prominence allowed Fortios to display fully his abundant talents, among which were oratory, literature, philosophy, medicine and theology. Inasmuch as church and state functions overlapped, the complete politician was of necessity a knowledgeable theologian. Given this set of circumstances, even the high office of patriarch was within reach of Fortios, who was yet a layman. In a power struggle led by Bardas, uncle of the youthful Emperor Michael III, the incumbent pa- patriarch Ignatius was forced to vacate his office, whereupon there were set in motion formalities compressed into one week, for which many a patriarch laboured a lifetime, to assure the, su- the succession to the patriarchal throne by Fortios the undisputed intellectual leader of the empire. In the span of seven days, Fortius was tonsured a monk by the Bishop Gregory of Syracuse, then a reader, followed in rapid succession daily by the successive offices of deacon, priest, and finally ecumenical patriarch on Christmas Day in AD 858. Fortius had scarcely launched his career when another series of political manoeuvres culminated with the assassination of the emperor and the succession to the Byzantine throne by Basil. Having been the favourite of the dead emperor, Fortius found himself deposed by his successor, but in a short period of time was induced to return as royal tutor. Basil was not one to waste a mind such as that of the renowned Fortius. When the reinstated Ignatius died, the Emperor Basil set aside all other considerations and gave the Patriarch's seat to Fortios, a choice he made clear should remain unchallenged by rival factions. As the Byzantine Empire's chief vicar of Christ, Fortius wrote one of the brightest chapters in the history of orthodoxy, a chapter which unfortunately was tarnished by the troublesome dissidents whose clamorous voices all but drowned out a spokesman for Christ. The voice of Fortius rang out loud and clear, however, when the authority of the Patriarchate of Constantinople was challenged, even threatened, by the Western clerics of Rome. There ensued a power struggle within the Church, equal to that of any in the state, and it was Fortius's brilliant defence of the Orthodox faith that averted a subservience to the West by the East. In the course of still another series of political intrigues under Leo VI, Fortius was again forced into exile, and he retired to live out his last years as a monk in Bordi, Armenia, where he died on the 6th of February in the year 891.